The 2023 Northeast Pacific Deep Sea Expedition has come to a close after two weeks working in and around the proposed Tongguan Hachquikuk Seagis Marine Protected Area. Our expedition was unprecedented. The discoveries we made and our personal encounters with deep sea animals have left us speechless. In collaboration with multiple nations and other scientists, we checked off a long list of objectives and collected data that will be used to inform research and marine conservation planning. With the help of ROPOS, a state-of-the-art remotely operated vehicle, we visited an array of amazing deep sea ecosystems. The imagery we obtained with the help of ROPOS is immaculate and allowed us to capture behaviors and ecosystems that have never been seen before. We returned to Explore Seamount to survey long-term monitoring sites. We took ROPOS on a circumnavigation of the peak to answer questions about the distribution of corals and sponges and how they may be influenced by current flow. 21 years after they were last explored, we investigated the hydrothermal vents at Explore Ridge. Ropos captured images of shimmering water and black smoking chimneys covered in tube worms and bacterial mats. We gathered important data to support ongoing research, providing evidence of a dynamic system with new areas of active venting, inactive vent sites, and newly classified extinct chimneys. We returned to NEPDEP 58 in the Tuzo Wilson Seamount chain to gather more imagery at the skate nursery that we discovered in 2019. We obtained the first ever live footage of a Pacific white skate in the midst of laying an egg, and we now have evidence that more than one species of skate utilize this nursery ground. We were stunned to also discover the evidence of hydrothermal venting on the seamount, providing warmer water to the depths, likely aiding in the successful gestation of the skate eggs. Guided by collaborators on land, we ventured to the Winona Basin cold seeps. The ship's echo sounder displayed a plume of bubbles rising one kilometer from the seafloor and gases could be smelled from the deck. On bottom, bubbling gases escaped from the seafloor and large slabs of icy methane hydrates emerged from the sediment. We contributed to ongoing research of cold vent ecosystems by documenting the characteristics of the bubbles and measuring the volume of gas seeping from the seafloor. The amazing capabilities of ROPOS allowed us to complete our deepest dive to date, taking us to an astonishing 3,200 meters. Our taxonomists were ecstatic as we encountered and collected rare and potentially undescribed species. We ended our journey at the Heshkwet Slope Cold Seat Field, where we stumbled upon a garden of female octopuses sitting on their eggs. At each site, oceanographic sampling complemented the bottom-focused work of our expedition biological and chemical oceanographic properties of the entire water column were measured to complete the story of the deep sea ecosystems and the body of water that surrounds them. Our research was broadcast to a global audience as we hosted live outreach events from the ship and live streamed all of our dives around the world. Outreach events were hosted cooperatively by our partner nations, collaborators, and the at sea science team. This expedition was a UN Ocean Decade endorsed activity and will contribute to our global understanding of the deep through the Challenger 150 initiative. Amazing. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in the science theater today. Uh, my name's Kiki, and I'm going to be our science world host. You can see we have some exciting visitors on the screen, and I'll introduce those folks in just a moment. Uh, before we begin, I do want to gratefully acknowledge that we are here at Science World on the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I love being able to get up in the morning and look out my window and see the beautiful mountains uh, that this land has and to be able to explore the beaches and the oceans. And I hope that we can all take a moment uh, just to think about the land that we're on and the people who live on that land, both past and present. Amazing. All right, we do have a very exciting presentation. Uh, as you can see, we have some guests with us and they are not just tuning in from a regular old office. They are actually tuning in from the Pacific Ocean. You can kind of see out their window right now. So some housekeeping, uh, if you experience some delay or maybe a little bit of lag in the video, just keep in mind that they're tuning in from the ocean, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. 
uh, we are very excited to have uh, researchers and scientists from the Northeast Pacific Deep Sea Expedition Program here with us today. They're going to give us a bit of an introduction into the cool research that they're doing in the deep sea. And then they're going to give us a bit of a maybe tour of the vessel that they're on. And then there will be an opportunity for some questions and answers. So if you do have any questions and questions that you want to ask, keep them in your brains uh, for the end, and we'll have some opportunity to ask those. Before I finally pass it off, I do want to let you all know that this is also being live streamed. Any questions that you ask, your faces will not be on the live stream, um, but we'll still be able to hear you and the scientists will be able to hear you as well. So that being said, I'm going to pass it off to Sharice, uh, who's gonna tell us about our expedition there. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today. I just wanna check that you can hear me okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Uh, well, hi, everyone. Uh, myself and uh, the team are joining you from on board the telly. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Dr. Sharice Dupree, and I am the head of the Deep Sea Ecology Program, which means that somebody actually pays me money to go explore the deep sea, find new animals, find amazing places, film them, document them, and share them with the world so that we can know how to best protect them and manage them. And I'm joined today by one of my colleagues, Heidi. Heidi, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Heidi, and I am a marine biologist studying with uh, Sharice Dupree, these amazing deep sea environments, and we're excited to talk to you about them today. Uh, Kiki, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we have a couple pictures to, uh, for speaking points, if you wouldn't mind bringing that up, and then we'll get yeah. started. Yes, I'll get so those up in just a second. Yes, thank you. So we are calling our expedition part of the Northeast Pacific Cold Seep Expedition. We had the first part of our expedition a month ago, and that was in partnership with the Quatsino Pachidat uh, Council of the Haida Nation and New Chalmith Tribal Councils, as well as Ocean Networks Canada. And then we're coming to you again from the vessel a month later, and we are working with the Canadian Coast Guard and Ocean Network Canada and UVic to do more science. Uh, so it's a pretty exciting time. If you wouldn't mind the next slide. So yeah, we are out in the middle of the ocean. It's pretty uh, cool and that we're able to connect with you. We are on the Coast Guard vessel, the John P. Tully. So this vessel is over 70 meters long and there's uh, about 45 of us on it together. We haven't seen anyone else in almost two weeks. So it's been very interesting. And there's about 14 science crew on right now. So you're gonna get to meet some of our science crew. We have people like Sharice and I who study the animals on the bottom. We have Coast Guard um, colleagues who are here to uh, work with their tools. We're gonna introduce CAM. We have oceanographers who study the water column above of us. And we're able to connect with you right now because we have super cool, um, strong connectivity with internet, which uh, is improving technology, which is just incredible. So next slide. We are here because we want to study cold seeps. So we are, are coming to you off the west coast of Vancouver Island. And we spent last month up and further north along Vancouver Island. And right now we're further south uh, where you're seeing those snowflake shapes. And what are cold seeps? Well, the next slide helps tell us that. So cold seeps are where bubbles of gas are actually coming out of the sea floor. They come out and they start rising up to the surface of the ocean and they actually come from deep within the earth. They have gases in it, like things called, called methane. And we can study them uh, on our coast. They are up to a kilometer and a half below the ocean surface. So to think about how deep that is, that's like 300 giraffes stacked on top of each other. Pretty weird to think about. <laughs> uh, next slide. So at these environments, it's really cool. The gas bubbles out and it creates these hard structures. So um, the rock that you see there is called carbonate rock. So as this uh, gas is coming out of the Earth's surface, it interacts with the seawater and it makes this hard, these hard structures over time. And what's also really cool is when it's really deep, it can create this methane hydrate, also known as ice. So we go down and we see beneath the ocean floor ice and rocks. It's very exciting. 
Uh, next slide. And we've even actually seen large chunks of this methane ice that can float around on the ocean floor, almost like an iceberg down on the uh, deep ocean floor, which is very cool. And why these, uh, we want to study these environments, uh, next slide, is because they're actually really important habitats for animals. So um, what you're seeing in this picture is that actually animals can use these chemicals that are coming out, bubbling out of this water um, to create food chains or food webs. So it actually often starts with this fuzzy bacteria, the deep sea, it almost looks like a grass. And then as you can see in this image, it starts supporting all this other life around it. You're seeing a rockfish, you're seeing bivalves or um, clams that are there. Next slide. And we, uh, you also can see that this bacteria builds up and then we have clams and snails in and around these hard structures. And then it draws in things like fish. And I'd love to leave this up long enough for you to count all the fish, but then you'd probably be here too long. So just to give you a hint, there's 24. Uh, 24 slide, fish. <laughs> yeah. And then um, why we also study them is that what we are finding is that cold seats compared to you know, the muddy abyss right beside it is that we are finding animals here that are found nowhere else on earth. So animals that are endemic to these areas or just found at these areas, and we actually find them in really high densities. So what you're looking at now is a huge clump of tube worms that all entangle to each other. There's snails living on top of them and other animals as well. Um, I'm gonna pass off to Sharice for the next part. Thank you, Heidi. If we could move. Yeah, thank you. Great. So Heidi mentioned that cold seeps have rocks at them um, and that they're formed because of the bubbling. And we actually sent our friend uh, that's with you today, he, he, uh, a rock that we collected a few weeks ago. And hopefully you'll all get a chance to look at it. But the amazing thing is that the rocks are actually growing down there. And so they can pick up shells and tubes of other animal of the animals that are around. And so if you get a chance to look at the rock, take a look to see if you can spot the animals that the rock has grown around. Hopefully you'll see some shells and some tubes. Next slide, please. So these rocks can grow very large, the size of cars, even the size of houses, and some ca cover vast areas like football fields. And they're really bumpy and they make caves. And caves are the perfect habitat for octopus to live in. And on the last expedition, we became one of four science teams in the world to find a nursery ground of these deep sea octopus. So you can see in the photos there that we found lots of these purple octopus with big black eyes. They're very cute. If you look really close on the photo on the left, you can actually see the little white sacks. Those are the octopus's eggs because this was a nursery ground. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see the black dots in the eggs. Those are the little baby octopus's eyes. So we've seen the moms. We saw predators around. We saw the moms actually fending off and pushing the predators away like the red crabs you see in the picture and then we saw the successful little babies around the nursery ground too you can see in the top right corner that's a little baby octopus so that was an amazing find and to be you know of the top four in the world or the first four in the world to ever find this um that's pretty special special to you know be a canadian to have these types of ecosystems in our ocean if we can move to the next slide so um the ocean is very large and we really want to find ecosystems like this, habitats like this, animals like this, so that we can study and protect them. And so we use things to map the ocean. And what you're seeing here is a very special device that we custom made for the ship we're on. It's called an echo sounder and we lower it into the water and we use the same type of, um, same type of method that bats use echolocation that whales use to see around the ocean that echolocation we use that pointing down from the ship to the ocean floor to map that ocean floor and that picks up bubbles and that picks up rocks and that tells us where to put our submarines next slide please so the bottom pictures are what the maps of the bubbles look like 
we really like it when we find bubbles. And these bubbles in particular were really exciting because they are some of the tallest bubble streams ever seen in the world. These bubble streams were over a kilometer. And so when we see something like this uh, on the ship's echo sounder, we stop the ship and that's when we launch the submarines. Next slide, please. So this is one of our submarines that we use. It is a robot called Ropos. So you can see it, it's a yellow sub, it's on the left-hand side of the screen. And then we're actually on the ship in a control room up between the robot, kilometers down below us. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is the camera that we've actually just launched into the water not five minutes ago. Um, it is a towed camera and we have a control station right to the right of me that you guys will see in just a little bit. And right now, if we can keep the slide up, I'm gonna bring um, Cam in. And actually maybe if we can switch views so that we're center, Cam is gonna talk about this robot that is behind me. So Cam, over to you. Thanks, Sharice. Uh, so one of the uh, specialized pieces of equipment we have on board the Tully is uh, a small uh, ROV. And ROV stands for Remote Operated Vehicle. And the one interesting uh, thing about this type of vehicle is it will descend down at least 1,000 feet or 300 meters below the uh, the surface of the water. So we, uh, we utilize this vehicle to um, survey the bottom um, and to... Uh, recently look at uh, certain shipwrecks on the uh, west coast of uh, Vancouver Island. Some of the interesting features on the ROV, it has propulsion. So there's six motors that uh, give the uh, vehicle thrust, uh, forwards, backwards, and up and down. There's a little uh, grabber on here. And what this, uh, this grabber does is collect samples uh, and also we have uh, lasers and the lasers on the, uh, the front of the ROV are uh, used to, uh, to measure uh, objects on the, uh, the bottom of the ocean. One of the really interesting uh, features of this vehicle is the, uh, the sonar and the sonar unit is uh, on the bottom of the vehicle. And what that does is bounce sound off of objects and allows us to navigate uh, the seafloor uh, when there's very, very poor visibility so we can find our way around uh, without using the uh, the onboard camera systems. And the uh, bottle on the top here, that's uh, GPS. And so what this does is ping a uh, signal back up to the ship, and that'll give us a reference of where this vehicle is on the, uh, the bottom of the seafloor. So that's uh, one of the specialized equipment uh, we have on board the ship to help us uh, better understand the... Uh, the seafloor and the uh, the ocean on the, the west coast of Vancouver Island. And I'll uh, pass you back to Shri. Thanks, Shri. I'm just so going to ask our audience a question. Has anybody here been to the Challenging the Deep exhibition yet? Nice. Oh, a few of you. If you haven't been yet, see if you can find one of these things in the Challenging the Deep exp uh, exhibition that's just around the corner once you leave the, uh, the hall here today. I love that. Okay, so we just have a couple more slides and then we're gonna go on a walkabout. So if we can progress one more. So uh, Cam showed you that our little ROV here has an arm. Um, there's an arm in the shot right now and it's showing you how the submersible can have tools on it and we can pick up those tools with the arm and we can manipulate them around the sea floor. So sometimes we use very complex things like robots and sometimes we use simple household objects. And as you can see here, we're using something that looks very much like a checkerboard. And when we put that behind the bubbles and we zoom in, we can actually see the size of the bubbles coming out. And that gives us scientists some information about how many bubbles are coming out and how large they are. And for the adults in the audience, um, these are methane bubbles. So you can only imagine how important it is to know for so many different reasons how much methane is naturally seeping out of the sea floor. And if we can progress one more slide. So here's a, another very sophisticated piece of science equipment. It is a tube that we have turned upside down. Um, and what we do is we hold that tube over uh, the bubbles and the bubbles go up into it and we time how long it takes to fill up. And that gives us a measure of how fast bubbles are coming out of the seafloor. So you can see here that when you break down science into its little bits, it's actually pretty simple, uh, but don't tell anyone uh, that our jobs are actually simple, please. Um, okay, and next slide. 
Okay, so I've told you about the bubbles we study on the seafloor. Another thing that we study that's so important is the water that the water that bathes all these environments. And so uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to our onboard acoustic uh, expert and oceanographer, Chelsea Stanley. Um, Chelsea, can you please stay? Hello, can you hear me? We're just going to turn the other um, yes, mic or that speaker off. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is Chelsea Stanley, and I will be taking you on a quick tour of our working space. A lot of you might have been on a ship in the past. Sorry, Chelsea. Oh, sorry, Chelsea. You're, you're a little bit choppy. Is there another speaker that's on? No. Okay. Can all good. All me? good. We can. We better? can. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. I am going to take you on a tour of the ship. If you've ever been on a BC ferry or on a cruise ship or on a, your family's fishing boat, then you are going to recognize that we're on a boat. But ours is a little different than yours because we do have some very specialized equipment in our lab and out on our deck. And I'll quickly walk you through some of that. If I can figure out how to turn my camera around. One sec. <laughs> Just a sec. Sorry. There we okay. go. Being okay. Live on Perfect. The boat. <laughs> yes, thank you. So welcome to our lab. This is where most of the action is happening on our survey. We have a huge lab here with lots of different tools. Um, this is our station where we are monitoring our multi-beam acoustic system. We've got Andy back there, one of our um, camera technicians working on some gear. We've got our crew and science collaborated Wordle board, keeps everyone's spirits high. And then here we have got our pilots and our expedition team. We are currently down with our boot um, deployable camera, watching at about, how deep are we everybody? Turn around and wave to the science world. How deep are we, Michelle? How many? 68. We're at 68 meters below the ocean right now, looking at a lot of the bottom type. We're seeing some anemones and different types of um, benthic animals. So we hang out down here for a bit. We've got lots of cameras, wave. There's, there's where you were just watching Sharice and Heidi. I will take you out onto the deck now and show you a bit of what's going on outside. All right, welcome onto the deck of the Tully. We have got a nice huge deck here. You can see no land to be seen. So this big winch here with this spool of wire is what is holding our camera down to the bottom of the ocean where we are. And um, when we're ready, to, we'll pull it back up. And this wire does have a live feed. So we're able to watch the um, stream live and do lots of annotations, make lots of notes on what we're seeing. Back here on the back deck, say hi to Scott, one of our Coast Guard deckhands. We are going to be deploying this camera down to the bottom of the ocean to sit for a month. We will be able to see what kind of animals are encompassing this cold sea habitat. We have a little bit of bait just to see what we can attract, just so we know exactly what's there since this camera, oops, stand by, since this camera can't move. Um, so we'll be putting this down for a month, bringing it back, and then reviewing all the footage. I will quickly take you over here. I hope you can still hear me. As Sharice mentioned, we have a multi-beam on board. This pole was specially made for our vessel by ONC, and it has this head on it that has two transducers. So that is what is sending that sound down to the bottom of the ocean, which is reflecting back. And we're actually getting a three-dimensional um, picture of the bottom of the ocean. So it's showing us things like big boulders and different types of um, bathymetry that's been caused by different currents at the bottom. So it's giving us a lot of information that we didn't have before. Take you on a quick walk down and show you one of our oceanographic tools. Does it feel like you're all on a boat right now? <laughs> a little bit? Yeah. Uh -huh. don't, look, don't look too close, but we've got a gimbal, so hopefully we won't make you seasick. <laughs> so this is our rosette. So 
One of the important things about the bottom of the ocean is that all of the ocean on top of it has a big impact on it. So how much oxygen is the water, what temperature it is, how much salt is in the water is all very important to the animals that live in and around the habitat that we're monitoring. So we use this rosette. We've got 24 bottles. They hold 10 liters of water each. And I can actually close those bottles one at a time from the ship. So I can close one bottle at 100 meters and another bottle at 50 meters and so on. So we can really just choose where in the water pool we want to pick the water from because in the water it's not all the same. Things like temperature and salinity change how dense the water is. So it's like sometimes if you see oil floating on top of water, we can get different densities in the water and those can have different properties to them. The oxygen can be different and the temperature. So we need to know all that information when we're studying the ecosystem. So we bring up all those bottles full of water and then we sample them and we run different chemical processes on them to figure out all those values. We also measure that electronically with this CTD. So I think that's it for the deck. I'll walk you through here and I'll just quickly take you to show you a little bit about our living conditions because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what it's like to live on a boat. So we'll go through and I will show you one of our bunks. So this whole hallway is full of science bunks. Down at the very end through that door is actually, we have a gym. We have a gym on board. We don't, you know, you don't get to walk around very much out here, so we need to stay active. So there's a gym at the end of the hallway. We also have a big get mess where we all eat meals together. And this is one of our cabins. So the coolest thing about the cabin, in my opinion, is your window to the outside is actually a porthole. So you get to look out your window and look at the ocean, you get to peek outside and see if there's any whales, see what the weather's doing. And then we have some nice closets, a bathroom, and then to just like at camp, you may get to sleep in bunk beds. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like going back to being a kid. We have a desk, and this is where we hang out. So this is the main portion of where the science team spends our time on the vessel. We, of course, have tons of crew that we interact with and that are operating the vessel that we're very appreciative to. And I think that's it for me. Thanks so much for that tour. Uh, that was pretty cool to see all of the different parts of the boat. Love the porthole. Does anybody else have a porthole as their bedroom window? Zero. Zero people have a porthole as their bedroom window. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll pass back to you, Sharice. Thank you. Well, um, we have a bunch of, uh, of our team members around. Um, you know that we're diving right now, so we're in operational like uh, mode right now. But we would love to invite questions from the audience at this point, and we can have a conversation about science, about life at sea, um, you know, any, anything you want. What our favorite animals are, uh, I invite all questions, and we'll, we'll swap out. And whoever is best suited for the uh, task, we'll hand it to them, and they can answer. Amazing. So if we have anybody with questions, you are welcome to come up to the microphone right over here and Izzy will help you out. Um, and I think it is currently muted. If you would rather stay in your seat, just keep your hand raised and we'll bring the microphone over to you. But I think we've got one person coming up for our first question. Um, it mentioned in the like sort of like video trailer thingy that you guys found sort of like manta or stingray you find you guys found a ray uh could you like uh tell us a bit about that because that sounds like really interesting yeah absolutely and um yeah you're in good company a, a lot of people in the world are finding that particular finding really exciting so what happened was we were on something that we thought was extinct it was a, a what we thought was an extinct underwater volcano um, and we were exploring the top of it and we started to get surprised by just how much life was down there there were a lot of corals a lot of sponges and for uh, a kilometer and a half down it was a lot more than you would expect um, and and then we looked at the seafloor and while most volcanoes have lava on the seafloor we noticed that the seafloor was covered in little rocks and then when we went closer to it we saw it wasn't little rocks it was actually eggs 
it was skate eggs um, about the size of a, a I'm going to say a foot long sandwich because they were a foot long. Um, and so it was uh, it was absolutely covered in eggs, not stones. Um, and we had also seen these really large deep sea Pacific skates flying up from the depths of the ocean up to the summit of this volcano. And so we started to put it all together during our dive that these skates are coming up from the depths down, uh, down at three kilometers. They're coming up to the shallow summit of this uh, extinct volcano. They're laying their eggs. We didn't know why, though, until we flew around a little bit more and realized the water was shimmering. Um, we grabbed the thermometer that was on the submersible. We put it on the rocks, and we actually figured out that the volcano was still hot. Um, not boiling hot, but... Um, a couple degrees hotter, which makes a big difference when you're in the deep sea, because the deep sea is about two degrees Celsius. So that's really chilly. Um, and so what we've put together now is that the skates are coming from around the ocean basin, coming to this volcano that actually might be active still, uh, is admitting hot fluid to lay their eggs in a nice warm nursery. And we were just doing some back of the envelope calculations. And we think that we may have seen uh, a place where there's at least a million skate eggs. Um, it's a once in a lifetime discovery and we're so excited to share this with the world um, and to top it all off, a large female skate flew over us and we could see that she was actually laying an egg, which was another first. Um, so we stayed with that mother for some time. We documented the behavior and we became the, the first science team to film a deep sea skate laying an egg. Um, and so uh, it's just it's been a it's been an incredible um, you know back to back expeditions with uh, with being able to do that come out here again so soon afterwards and continue the science yeah that's so incredible going down somewhere where you think that there's no life and then all of a sudden there's how many eggs did you say we're estimating um, millions like millions in, of in eggs. one that's photo. So neat. In one photo, uh, I just counted 40 eggs, and it was about a meter by a meter photo. Uh, it's a very small, you know, about, about that big, and I could see 40 eggs, and the top of the seamount is kilometers in size. Yep. Incredible. All right, I think we have a lineup of questions. Amazing. Uh, does our next person want to ask a question? Um. So I was wondering, because we saw the picture of the like, two worms I saw, um, were there um like the first time people saw it, found it or like other people found it before it's just that um you noticed them again yeah so the question was yeah. about tube worms mm -hmm. That's excellent. That's an excellent question. And Heidi is actually a taxonomist who studies species of the deep. So I'm going to pass it on to Heidi. Hi. Yeah, when we saw those tube worms, it was not the first time that anyone had ever seen them. But what's really cool is that in the 1970s, our um, graduate student advisor took uh, one of these submersibles down and for the first time in Canada discovered we had these animals down in our waters. So that wasn't that long ago, only about 50 years. And it actually changed the way that we understand science because if you're in school and you learn about how food is on this world, you always learn about photosynthesis, which is taking the sun's light and turning it into food for uh, the whole uh, world and working its way up from the trees through the ecosystem. Well, down there, those tube worms have bacteria living within them, and they use the chemicals coming out of the water column to make food for their food chains. And it's pretty exciting. And um, these tube worms have really weird names. They're called symbolglinids. <laughs> So that's fun for you. And inside those tubes that you see, they have really cool red bushy feathery heads at the top and then segmented bottoms for their long, like you would see on like an earthworm or something like that. So thanks. That was a cool question. I think that's the first time I've had that one. <laughs> awesome. I learned more about tube worms today. Amazing. I think we have one, two, three, four, five more people in line. So we might do some quick questions and answers. Uh, go for it, my friend. Uh, uh, when you're, when, when you're in there, uh, what do you do in, like, your free time except, like, uh, do, going in the gym and sleeping? 
<laughs> Do you have a oh, life outside? You got it. You <laughs> Yeah, here. I, I'll get a couple people to tell you their favorite things to do. Cam, do you have a, something favorite you like to do when you have downtime here? Cam's often usually working on this thing. So let's see. Tell them about what you do in off hours. Yeah, my off time, I'm uh, normally fixing uh, the the vehicles. And uh, we're also, we have uh, television on board, uh, board games. And uh, we just hang out and uh, eat snacks and, and just... Uh, lounge around for the most part that sounds like my downtime anybody else eat snacks and play board games on their downtime yeah. quite a few people this is an awesome place to be we work a lot of time but um it's also our restaurant and our our socialization space so just so you know we do have cooks on board and they do very well for us and we have an eating hall um but I will introduce you to, uh, we have graduate students on board. So here is uh, Lindsay, and you can tell you about some of your downtime and what you do here. Hi, yeah, uh, yeah. For when I'm not working, which is not that often, I've been reading some pretty good books and uh, was playing card games with Heidi last night. She's beat me twice now, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and, and eating a lot of snacks. <laughs> we love the snacks. Amazing. I think we Everyone. have our next question. Oh, we've got another person telling us about their downtime. Thank you. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to share. Um, my name is Georgia Clyde. I'm a scientist for fisheries and oceans. And we have a ping pong table on board here. And so if you think ping pong is hard at a regular table, try playing it on a moving boat. So that's a pretty <laughs> fun way to uh, spend our downtime. Really get those hand-eye coordination skills up there. We try. We try. <laughs> awesome. All right. Our next uh, question asker. Go for it. Um. So... Uh, do you know where the bubbles on the sleeve were come come from? Where, where do the, the bubble bubbles were come from? A, that's a great question. A really big straw and a misbehaving child blowing into it. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not actually the answer. <laughs> The bubbles come from deep within the earth. If you've learned about tectonic plates at school, um, you'll know that the earth is actually made up of a whole bunch of pieces that fit together, but they don't fit together perfectly. And sometimes the pieces get pushed down and other pieces get pushed up. And we're talking about large scale, like movement uh, of things that are bigger than mountains, you know, the whole north pacific continent kind of thing moving and so the squeezing of the earth as it goes under plates that are on top of it squeezes out air bubbles um and gases and stuff and you could imagine if you had a sponge under water and you squeezed it you might see like air come out of it still even though uh, you thought there was none um so that's where the bubbles are come from um and it actually takes a really long time for these processes to start and then stop. So some of the features in our waters we know have been bubbling for tens to hundreds of thousands of years. So that's a lot of bubbling and that's a lot of squeezing. And you can only imagine how big this stuff is. Amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Our next, oh, we still have five people. We've gotten more, more questions. Um, amazing. So our next person, come on up. Did you discover any new wildlife? Ooh, have we discovered any new wildlife? That is one of our favorite questions. Um, I'm going to start us off by saying um, every time you go into the deep sea, uh, you, you discover something new. Uh, we have, and we're working it up, and I'm going to pass it off to uh, Heidi maybe to talk about one of our favorite new animals that we've discovered or just how many. Um, and I'll remind you that we did our deepest dive ever on the last expedition. Yeah, so I do like to study the animals that we find down here. And uh, what's so incredible about the deep sea is that we know so little about it. Um, we are working collectively as a planet to map our seafloor and we're working to mapping 30% of it. And even less than that has actually been visually surveyed. So had cameras or had samples collected from it. So we are always finding new things in the deep sea. It's really exciting. It's a new world with lots of discoveries. And just to give you an example, um, 
one of the years that we did this expedition and we had something that could take samples with the little arms. So what we try and do is with things that we can, we just take a snip of it. So like a coral, we just take a snip off the side or um, we do collect whole animals. We bring them up, they, we photograph them, we relax them, and then we preserve them and we give them to museums. And then we all as tax taxonomists can work on it together to assign a name to it. And during one of these expeditions, we found something like eight new species to science. It was so exciting. And um, last month, even, we went on our deepest dive yet. We went to over 3,000 meters. And Sharice had had all these great plans of us going lots of places. And myself and our taxonomic expert, Merlin Best, kept stopping the vessel and stopping the ROV, being like, what is that? That's literally what was coming out of our mouths. We didn't know. So we made some exciting collections last month. And unfortunately, this work takes a long time and working with experts around the world. So we don't have the full answers yet, but it's really cool down there. And um, it's everything from sea cucumbers, which sound like exactly what they are. They look like cucumbers, but they're under the sea and they have warts on them. And oh, they're so weird looking, but they're really cool. And we found new ones of those and up to different species of corals and sponges. We have a sponge that actually looks like a big bugle. Like, have you ever seen a Dr. Seuss book? It actually kind of looked like that. Just some crazy ideas that uh, is amazing finds on the deep sea. And then this expedition, we've actually been seeing a lot of wildlife on the surface. And it's not new to science, but I thought Chelsea might want to tell you a little bit about some of the really cool mammals we've been seeing. So yes, we've been very lucky with our marine mammals on this trip. So we've had some amazing encounters with humpback whales. Um, we're mm. always very mindful to keep our distance and use zoom lenses when we monitor marine mammals. But we did get some amazing footage of two whales together that were bringing their tails out of the water and their pectoral fins. Um, we could hear them breathing. It was pretty amazing. And then at the same time, we actually saw a group of northern right whale dolphins. I want you guys to remember that because I want you to look it up when you get home because it's probably one of the weirdest species of dolphin that you will ever see. So it's a northern right whale dolphin. And then our other favorite visitor that we tend to see once or twice a trip is a northern fur seal. So again, look them up. They're very cute. So the marine mammals have been great this trip. We've been very lucky. Amazing. Thank you. Now we do have a few more questions. Maybe we can do some quick question and quick answer if you're all good with that. Amazing. All right. Our next question. Go for it. Oh, we were muted. You can go ahead. How many of you are on the ship? That is a great question. <laughs> we have 25 crew in the Coast Guard. So the Coast Guard that operates our vessel, we've got 25 of them. They actually live on the ship 28 days on, and then they go home for 28 days, and then they come back. And for science, we have 14. Had to do a 15. Had to do a quick count. So yes, we've got 14 or 15 aboard. Hopefully, we know our numbers and we didn't lose anybody. <laughs> but all in total, there's about... 40 people on board, which is awesome. amazing. Hey. And our cook has a big job because he has to cook for all of us. <laughs> awesome. Our next question, go for it. Have you made, saw any ships? Ooh. Have you seen any ships? We have. Actually, yeah. we'll get one of our Coast Guard to tell us about one of the coolest things we've seen, which is a ship, but not in a normal place that you would want to uh, you, that you would expect to see it. We have seen a, a ship. We um, not on the surface, though. We uh, we went down about 500 feet below the surface uh, using the the ROV, and uh, we surveyed a ship that was sunk back in uh, about 1942, um, named the the Coast Trader. It was a ship that was carrying. Um, newspaper products um, from around the, the, the states. Um, and it is currently sitting upright and uh, in fairly good condition at about 500 feet uh, below the, uh, the surface and has uh, just amazing marine life uh, uh, surrounding it. So it's, uh, it's a nice treat to, uh, to explore that, uh, that vessel down there. I want to tell, I want to tell them about the ship taxi. Hey, you guys, yesterday we saw a ship. It was fantastic. So, we needed a piece of equipment delivered and we happened to know a ship coming out here. So we did a ship 
Uber taxi drop off where uh, they uh, <laughs> drove up and met it. And so it's a ship about the same size as ours, so 60 meter long ships met at sea, and we transferred a very important piece of equipment. Did uh, the ship also bring you some cheeseburgers along with it? <laughs> did not bring us cheeseburgers. We sent them treats, but uh, they didn't. They had just left the dock and didn't think we needed treats other than the one package we were asking for. That's fair. That's fair. <gasps> what do you eat on the ship? Uh, oh. Boy, it is an amazing amount of food. Um, we had cheeseburgers one day. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> found them. They, oh, <laughs> okay. And everyone likes to tell you that we have a hidden ice cream freezer. It's only hidden because we don't tell everybody on the first day. We wait till like about the middle of the uh, second week and then we let everybody know there's an ice cream freezer because it's pretty awesome. Um, there's a, every meal you have a few choices. So we have soup, salads, and sandwiches and uh, amazing meals. That sounds great. I want an ice cream freezer in my home. All right. Uh, I think we've got, we're just over time. We've got time for maybe two more questions. Go for it. How long do you plan to be underwater? Uh, I should choose myself. My name is Cammie Norgard. I'm one of the Fisheries and Ocean Sciences and uh, on leads on this trip. And we will be down for about another hour on this dive. And then we'll bring the camera up and we'll move to another dive and we'll do another one today. So we will be done all our diving by six o'clock tonight. I'll pass it up. Stay with me. Um, and I think I'd like to take the opportunity to say that right now is a really special time to be joining us on the ship. Because, Tammy, do you know what number dive we're on for this vehicle? I do. This is dive 100. And I was thinking, how many of the hundred we've been here for? So this is pretty exciting. Woo! A hundred! <laughs> we got to join for dive 100. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> All right, and our next question, go for it. What are your favorite activities when you're on land? <laughs> what are your favorite activities on, on land? land? Maybe we'll just do a quick fire. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. Swimming. I like everything about water, even when I'm on yeah, land. <laughs> I love surfing, and I travel the world to make sure I find the best waves, and I ride really big ones. <laughs> Soccer. <laughs> Mountain biking. Kayaking. Nice. All right, everybody in the, everybody in the uh, audience, shout out your favorite uh, activity on three. Ready? One, two, three. It's... <laughs> I love that activity, too. All right. One more question. Go for it. Did you name any of the species that you found? You know, that is a great question um, because they're new to science. So like Heidi said, it takes a long time to work up the, uh, the descriptions of the species we found. But So we haven't named the species, but I'll quickly tell you, we've discovered 45 mountains of British Columbia, and we are working with the coastal First Nations to give them all really great, meaningful names in the language of the indigenous people of Canada. And uh, it... We already have a name for the marine protected area, and you're going to have to look this one up and practice it because it took me a while. But it means deep sea and sea monster, and it's Tanguan Hachquika Sigis. So you look that up and you practice seeing it because that's going to be one of the largest marine protected areas in the world. And our science helped create that. Awesome. Thanks. All right. And we do have time for our final question for the day today. Go for it. Um, have you seen any like uh, hydrothermal vents or any other hydrothermal features? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so as you might know, because you asked that question, hydrothermal vents are where superheated water comes out of the seafloor 400 degrees. So that's four times the boiling water temperature. And we have 35 vent fields on our coast. And they're actually going to be all inside that marine protected area I was talking about. So um, on the uh, last leg of the expedition, we did go to vents that were last visited 20, 25 years ago. Um, and we got to lay eyes on them again for the first time. Um, it was amazing. And there were even black smokers, which means the water was so hot and it was so full of minerals that it actually looked like the ocean floor was on fire. And we got to film that. And if you do check out um, our social media and our, um, our YouTube, you'll be able to see those hydrothermal vents. Um, and what a treat, right, Heidi, to see hydrothermal vents. Yeah. Awesome. That is, oh, we've got one, one quick one. Yeah. 
sorry. What's uh, being 3D printed behind you? <laughs> that is an excellent question. Can you pass me with something like a clip? So um, we brought this 3D printer as uh, it's a really useful tool at sea. We can go like hundreds of kilometers off of the coast where if something breaks on our machines, we can't go to the store and buy it. So we actually have this 3D printer to be able to print pieces like that. But we are lucky and that's not what's happening today. Today we are printing <laughs> chip clips. <laughs> And this is, don't tell the Coast Guard, but we're giving them to them as gifts for having us and taking such good care of us while we are here. So it says thanks and the tally. So that's what's going on today. I'm glad you could spot that. That's really cool. <laughs> What a great uh, note to end on. Uh, thank you so much, uh, both to the expedition team and to all of you here at Science World and to those of us who joined online for joining us today. Can we give a giant round of applause to the expedition team? Thank you so much. We love talking to you. Uh awesome. Um, and uh, those of you who are sticking around Science World, be sure to check out the new Challenging the Deep exhibition, which has lots of really neat information on exploring uh, deep ocean. Uh, and thanks again for joining us all today. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day at Science World and on the ocean. Um, and we'll see you all later. Thanks. Bye. 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 <laughs> thanks again. Well done.